I'm Claire Smith, welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to be talking about the perfume brand Mugler. This is going to be a house overview. I'm going to talk through the main fragrances and I'm going to tell you about the history of the fragrances and really what are the meanings behind the fragrances, what were the inspirations behind the fragrances. So if you like this kind of content then please consider subscribing. I do videos all about perfume science, perfume history and I also just do some straight up perfume reviews as well. So if that kind of thing interests you then please join me. And also if you do end up liking this video, then please press the like button as well. So Mugler is a brand that has been around since the early 90s. And it is really one that when I first started watching Perfume YouTube was just everywhere. People were obsessed with Mugler. And why were they obsessed with Mugler fragrances? It's because Mugler made very distinctive, very striking fragrances. There's no real liking a Mugler fragrance, or there wasn't any real liking a Mugler fragrance. It was either love or hate, and there really was nothing in between. And that's what got people so hooked on those fragrances. So I'm just gonna take you through the brand history, and I'm going to talk a little bit about Thierry Mugler as well himself. And I'm gonna tell you also about what's happened more recently with the Mugler brand. So Thierry Mugler was born in France in 1948, and he decided that he wanted to be a ballet dancer. So his early career was spent doing that, and then later on, he moved into fashion design. In 1973, he produced his first collections, and he established his own brand. Thierry Mugler was way ahead of his time in that he featured people in his fashion shows who perhaps weren't what you would traditionally think of as a model. People who nowadays you wouldn't blink seeing in a fashion show because that's really what brands are trying to do but Mugler was just way ahead of everybody in trying to include everybody in his fashions. Thierry Mugler very famously designed for a number of celebrities so you may see his work in Indecent Proposal the film featuring Demi Moore he actually designed the black dress that she wears in that film and he came out of retirement to design garments for Beyonce on some of her tours as well so really Thierry Mugler has designed for a great variety of people and his clothing designs were very innovative and very famous. Although Thierry Mugler's clothing brand was really successful, it was poorly financially managed and that meant that Thierry Mugler had to sell shares in his clothing brand. One of the principal buyers of these shares was Clarins. At the time and even now, Clarins are better known for cosmetics than for fashion. But actually Thierry Mugler had a huge interest in launching his own fragrance line and so he approached Clarins with his ideas. In 1992 Thierry Mugler outlined his vision for his first fragrance. He based it around his lucky motif, the star. He saw the star as a symbol of wishes coming true, of dreams, and he'd also been told by a fortune teller that a distinctive star print on his palm was his lucky symbol and he should include it in all of his work. Mugler carried this through throughout a lot of his fashion lifetime. He used the motif repeatedly in his clothing lines, but he also used it for his first fragrance. The fortune teller told Mugler that the star would bring him good luck. And Mugler subsequently said that he did not choose the star, the star chose him. Mugler said of Angel that he wanted the fragrance to be a very sensual fragrance and he wanted it to feel almost like you're devouring the person that you love which is quite a weird concept in itself, really. Angel broke the mould. At the time, Angel was against a backdrop of fresh, minimalistic fragrances. Angel really stood out in that it was completely different from everything that was going on on the market at the time. Angel was strong. It was gourmand. It was probably one of the first gourmand fragrances, or at least one of the most popular first gourmand fragrances. And it was also very innovative in its use of ingredients. So Angel was formulated by the perfumers Olivier Cresp and Yves de Chéry, and those two actually took Mugler's idea of being in a fairground. Mugler loved the idea of a fairground fragrance because that was one of his favourite childhood memories. He wanted something to elicit the colours, the lights, and also the sweetness of the fairground. And so the perfumers took that idea and made a cotton candy-like fragrance with ethyl maltol, quite an innovative ingredient at the time, which gives this sort of burnt sugar smell to things. You might have smelt it in Baccarat Rouge. 
and they combined it with a really high percentage of patchouli and that grounded the fragrance. That stopped it from being just too sweet but it also created a huge contrast in the fragrance and that made that fragrance really bold, really interesting, really daring and really something that hadn't been done before. Angel was meant to reflect the duality of the nature of women, so something sensual but also something very strong. Angel also stood out because of its colouring and its branding and its bottle design. So it came in a five-pointed star and the bottle design has changed over the years. There have been some special editions for each year as well where they've changed the design slightly, but the star shape has remained. And actually this shape was so difficult to make that Mugler had to talk to a number of different glass makers in order to actually get the vision that he had into reality because so many glass makers ended up turning him down. He actually went in the end to a glass maker called Bross and Sons and they were one of the few that actually agreed to make such a difficult shape. The bottle itself was so expensive that Mugler decided to make it refillable because he didn't want something so beautiful to be thrown away. And also the price point of the bottle meant that it made more financial sense for people to be able to buy refills of their fragrances. This game was very ahead of its time because it was very environmentally friendly having these refill options. And Mugler was the first brand to do this. When Angel hit the market, it wasn't an immediate success. Retailers just didn't like it. It was strong. It was in a blue bottle. It just looked odd against this backdrop of the freshy trend of the 1990s. This was not a fragrance that fitted in, but actually it was a slow growing, slow word of mouth kind of trend. And actually by 1998, Angel had begun to outsell Chanel No. 5 as the number one selling fragrance in France. People loved Angel because it's loud, it's unapologetic, and it just has this huge clash of smells. And both men and women wore Angel. It was universally appealing. When I smell Angel, it smells to me like green pineapple leaves. Then it goes into this sort of berry sweetness. You also get sort of some kind of spices in there. It's warm, but there's then that explosion of the patchouli. I mean, it's there from the beginning, but it really dominates later on in the fragrance. And the patchouli is almost chocolatey. It's rich, it's dark. And it's something that just makes you think a little bit of bodies almost. It has a slightly, is it, isn't it kind of body odour feel to it. And that makes Angel incredibly distinctive. It's something that nobody had smelt before. And that's really why Angel was such a huge runaway success. So Angel itself has spawned a number of different flanker fragrances since 1992. And it's been reformulated, understandably, many times in the last 30 odd years but it's still a really successful fragrance and it's one that still stands out and has inspired a number of other fragrances. Without Angel, we wouldn't have fragrances like La Via Belle by Lancôme and we wouldn't have Victor and Rolf's Flower Bomb. So let's continue the story of the Mugler house. By 1997, Clarins decided they wanted a controlling stake in both Mugler's fashion brand and also in Thierry Mugler fragrances. And they actually bought up a 94% share in the fragrance brand leaving only Thierry Mugler himself left as a minority shareholder. 13 years after Angel, Mugler decided to release another fragrance, and that was in 2005. They released Alien. So Alien is an interesting name for them to choose. Firstly, it's the same number of letters as Angel, and secondly, it's almost an anagram of Angel. It really does exemplify a kind of branding. The name Alien also says something very specific about the fragrance. It says that it's different. It says that it's something that isn't on the market, something we haven't seen before. So Alien, much like Angel, was said by Mugler to be celebrating women. But this time, instead of celebrating their sensuality and their duality, Mugler said that he was seeing women as warriors. Alien was created by the perfumers Dominique Ropion and Laurent Bruyère. And they created this fragrance to exemplify Mugler's vision of a solar goddess. Mugler said of Alien that when he thought of the fragrance, he dreamt of something that was radiant and that was, would capture the splendour of women rather than be something that was seductive. He said Alien to him was a talisman charged with positive energy. 
With Alien, he wanted to stir emotions and create something addictive. Corpion and Briere used various ingredients to give the idea of the sun. So they used jasmine sambac and they also used benzyl salicylates to try and give it that solar feel, that luminous feel. They also used woody ambers with slightly animalic touches in order to give a strong warmth to the fragrance and a feeling of envelopment. The feeling of envelopment was amped up to the max with added use of cashmerin, a sort of musky style ingredient that gives the fragrance a really nice musky animalic finish but also gives it a feeling of a thickness. Alien was such a success because it just had such a huge trail. It was a very strong fragrance and it was just one that was very distinctive again, much like Angel was 13 years earlier. And it was put in these bottles that look very much like there's something from another planet, but they're actually meant to represent amethysts. So they look like a purple kind of gem. And the bottles even have these gold clasps on them, almost like the bottle itself is a piece of jewellery. The different flankers of Alien are all different colours, and that's supposed to represent the other gems in the series. I also think the little bottles of Alien actually do look a little bit like aliens to me. Of course, Alien will have been reformulated in the intervening years. It's been on the market 18 years now. And of course, it will have changed over that time. Regulations change. I do think the new formulation retains something of the old Alien. It's not so far away, especially if you don't smell them side by side. But if you smell them side by side, you will smell some differences in how this smells now. The new formulation of Alien is just a little bit like it's been neutered almost. It's just a little bit, just not as exciting as it once was. The jasmine is slightly different. It's slightly greener. It's a little bit soapier. It's less luminous than it once was. It doesn't have a menthol beginning in the start of it. And also the fragrance in the dry down just doesn't have that addictive muskiness that it once had in the original fragrance. It still is a magnificent fragrance though. It still is something that does stand out. But white florals, strong piercing white florals are something that is more common now. I think, you know, when Alien came out, that 80s style kind of white floral was really all that we had. This is a very more synthetic feeling kind of style of white floral fragrance. And that's what made it distinctive. Again, with Alien, just like Angel, Alien was a very love it or hate it fragrance. There was no liking Alien. It's not a fragrance that you're just going to casually throw on and, and not have a feeling about, not have an opinion about. It's something that you either can't stand or you love. So after Alien, what was the next move for Moogla? So in 2010, Moogla launched a third fragrance. This third fragrance was called Womanity. And Womanity is a play on words with humanity. Womanity was launched alongside a website in which was sort of aiming at to be some kind of platform where women could connect with each other. Social media was something that had already taken off and the Moogla brand were trying to capture that excitement almost, but they were just a bit too late with that. The fragrance bottle itself does capture the idea of womanity, I think, quite well. So it's kind of quite futuristic looking or maybe even sort of something that looks like an ancient culture. It has these kind of almost cyborg looking impressions on the glass and a woman's face on the side. It also has these metal chains and cuffs. And the chain itself is meant to represent the unbreakable bonds between women. The bottle kind of reminds me of sort of Mad Max and that kind of era of films almost. I think the fragrance itself was, was kind of groundbreaking in a way and quite controversial because it used something described as a caviar accord. And that was a salty proprietary ingredient that was used exclusively by this fragrance. This fragrance was actually inspired by Greek islands. It was inspired by the Cyclades islands and it's meant to represent the fig trees and the beachy smells that you get on those Greek islands. So this fragrance uses the entire fig tree. It uses the, the wood, it uses the leaves, it uses the fruit, but it also has those salty aspects from, from those sea notes, from the caviar notes. To me, this fragrance opens with quite a lot of citrus. It's, it's definitely got the whole of the fig tree. You definitely get a lot of woodiness. There's definitely a salty aspect to it, but actually I don't really feel like they overdosed on the caviar record at all. I don't really feel like they pushed the envelope too far with this one because they knew already it was controversial. 
I don't think this fragrance was a runaway success. I think, again, it did have that Moogler style, love it or hate it about it. There are still people talking about this fragrance and saying how it's the worst thing they've ever smelled. And then there are other people who absolutely love it. I think I was kind of more in the love it category, but I, I you know, I, I don't love it to the degree where I wanted a second bottle of it. I think I was worried about how it had been reformulated and I know it has been reformulated, but I've had a few people tell me that it's really not that bad and that I should probably just try it. But yeah, I think that's really my feeling about it. This one stands out. It's definitely different. It's definitely Moogler, but it just doesn't excite me as much as Angel or Alien did. So Womanity was actually formulated by Alexis Dadier and also Ralph Schweiger who is of Lipstick Rose and also Eau de Merveille by Hermes fame. So, so again, two perfumers. And I think that's a really distinctive thing about the early Moogler fragrances. They always approach different perfumers to formulate their fragrances. And that difference gives each fragrance a very different identity. Moogler said of Womanity that he wanted Womanity to be the fragrance that plays on the emotions of the woman who wears it. Sadly, nowadays, I've only seen Womanity being available on the Moogla website itself. I, I do fear that Womanity has been discontinued now and they are just selling off the excess stock and then that will be it. So if you do want to try Womanity, I would suggest you go and grab a bottle ASAP because I don't think this one will be hanging around for very long. By 2010, Moogla said he felt like he'd lost a little bit of interest in the fashion business and he actually removed his first name from the fashion house branding he called it Moogler instead of Thierry Moogler and actually this was really because he said that he felt like fashion was more interested and more concerned with money than with fashion by that time he said that he actually felt more interest in his fragrance brand than he did in his clothing brand at that time he was just doing special assignments for celebrities he was just taking on very special projects and not really concerned with the day-to-day -day running and the day-to-day -day direction of his fashion house. He later said, fashion is beautiful. Fashion is 3D art on a human body. But fashion wasn't enough for me. I needed to create in different ways. And that's why I went into perfume. He also said he loved perfume because perfume felt so close to emotion. That fragrance is such a good connection between people. That smell is very important when you fall in love with someone. Perfume can be your memory of someone and it can also be something that reflects your mood. Moogler said he wanted to help people with that. He wanted to bring a little joy to the everyday. From 2016, Thierry Moogler removed his first name from his fragrance brand as well so that it matched his fashion brand. So from now on, Thierry Moogler Fragrances was known as Moogler Fragrances and the first fragrance they released under the Moogler branding was Angel Muse. This difference in speed of rebranding between the fashion house and the perfume house was really a reflection of how frequently new fragrances are released. It's just not as often as, as clothing. So Angel Muse was released 24 years after the original Angel was released and it was marketed as a flanker of Angel and I agree with them, it is a true flanker of Angel. It has that angel DNA, but it also has its own identity. And it's a very clever interpretation of the original angel. I really loved as well how 21 years after her mother had modelled for Moogler and for angel fragrances, Georgia May Jagger was chosen as the figurehead for Angel Muse. And that felt like a new generation was being attracted into the angel family. So Angel Muse is so much more friendly than Angel ever was. Angel Muse is sweeter, Angel Muse has a milk chocolatiness about it, and the strong patchouli is much toned down. It's transformed into something much lighter, much friendlier, and it's actually vetiver that is used to ground the fragrance rather than a really strong patchouli note. Quentin Biche, or Quentin Biche, is the person who formulated this fragrance, and he uses his signature zingy top note, in this fragrance, it's grapefruit, but yes, that's something that very distinctively makes this fragrance his. I think really this fragrance is very distinctive again as well because of its bottle. Moogler really do very distinctive bottle shapes. And this fragrance is, is modelled on something they call a cosmic pebble. To me, this, this kind of design makes me think that Angel and Alien almost had a baby. It looks like something an alien might come to Earth in, um, an alien spacecraft, or it looks like something that you might, might hatch an alien from almost. 
Clearly Moogler didn't really care how much of your dressing table they were taking up with their fragrance bottles because actually the larger bottles of this fragrance are very big and they didn't stand much like the original Angel bottles don't stand. And I think that annoyed a lot of people actually, especially those with larger fragrance collections. And actually later on Moogler did bow to pressure and produce standing versions of the Angel Muse bottle and also of the Angel bottle eventually. Angel Muse really played on the marketing strategy that Angel had used so many years earlier and it had the hashtag the fragrance you love to hate and that's again playing on Moogler's idea that you either love something or you hate something there's nothing really in the middle and again this fragrance prompted very strong reactions. I think again Angel Muse is a fragrance much like Angel that has completely nailed that genderless feel. It's something that I think a lot of men would be absolutely fine with wearing. I think Angel Muse was an excellent flanker. I think it really reflects the original Angel but still has its own identity. It feels younger, it feels brighter, it feels easier to wear than Angel and it just feels a little bit more modern than Angel because it was, you know, it was made at least 24 years after the original Angel came out. And Angel Muse is probably the first fragrance where I don't have a direct quotation from Moogler himself as to his feelings on this fragrance. And I think that's really a very distinctive thing about how his involvement with the fragrance house and how his input into the fragrances maybe was waning at this point. So in 2017, Moogler launched the fragrance that made me love the Moogler brand. And really, this is probably one of the safer fragrances. This is one of the easier ones to love. It still is distinctive. It still has a very individual style to it. But this one's a lot friendlier, a lot easier. So this fragrance was Aura. And Aura was packaged in this green heart, almost slightly anatomically correct heart in a way. And the green represents the fourth chakra. That's deliberate because the fourth chakra is the heart. And it also has this sort of silver M almost on the outside of the bottle reflecting the Moogler brand. It does look still something that could fit in with Angel Muse, Angel and Alien. It has a very distinctive colour. And this beautiful emerald colour just tells you everything you need to know about the fragrance. This is a green vanilla fragrance. This is a fragrance that reflects rainforests. It makes you think of lush, wet, green, tropical rainforests, blooming with life and teeming with, with noises and, and excitement. The name Aura even reflects back to Angel and back to Alien. This was something that was saying we're just kind of forgetting about humanity. That was a bit of a weird one. We're just moving on. This is this is Moogler trying to get back to what it was doing with Angel and Alien. So Aura was created by four different perfumers, all of which who hadn't worked on Moogler fragrances before. So these perfumers were Daphne Bouguet, Amandine Marie, and Marie Salamagna, and Christophe Erot. So I've heard this fragrance as described as a little bit minty and honestly I didn't get it when I first smelt this and even more recently I didn't get it and I've been trying this fragrance more and more and more and more for this video. I've been wearing it a lot and I've suddenly realised that a couple of minutes in, not for very long, on me at least, there is something minty in this fragrance and it's it's not quite minty It's it's but I guess that's how people would describe it. I don't know exactly which ingredient that is bringing this mintiness. It might be a combination of them, but there's there's wolfwood in here. There's something called tiger liana as well. And that was a special ingredient that was made specifically for this fragrance. It took 10 years of development to try and make. And this ingredient is supposed to have a buttery, smoky nuttiness to it. So I'm not sure it is that alone. It must be that with something else. But there's also rhubarb leaf in this fragrance. And I definitely do smell something bitter. There's something bitter and green in this fragrance. But basically, for me, this fragrance overall is a very green vanilla fragrance. And I do think that I do smell the ylang ylang in this fragrance as well. I think if you don't like ylang ylang, you probably won't enjoy this fragrance. Although it's not, you know, like a urine kind of a lang a lang at all, this fragrance. I think this one is, is just very distinctive. It, it just has this lushness, it has this wetness, it has this tropical feeling to it. And it just looks exactly how it was marketed. It looks like those adverts with that woman standing in that lush tropical rainforest. 
it looks otherworldly in those adverts and that's how this fragrance feels. This is Moogler going back to its roots and trying to do something very, very different. And this is a very green, vanillic, amber fragrance. It's green, it's wet and it's sweet. And yeah, Aura is just the one that got me hooked. It was the one that got me interested in what the Moogler brand stood for. It made me try all the others. And, and this one I completely blame for the number of Moogler bottles that I have in my collection today. So for all hardcore Moogler fragrance fans, there is a before and an after, and the before and the after refers to the L'Oreal takeover of the Moogler house. That happened in an agreement in October 2019 and was finalised in, I think, March 2020. And that really signified a very distinct change in the direction of the fragrances that were later released. And the first major release by the Moogler brand under L'Oreal's direction was Angel Nova. So Angel Nova, if you were a hardcore fan of the original Angel, was unlikely to float your boat. This was the Barbie pink version of Angel. It had literally nothing to do with the original Angel. So Angel Nova was created by Louise Turner, Sonia Constant, and again Quentin Biche, who had worked on Angel Muse. But this time it was a very fun, very fruity, very light-hearted fragrance, but it was clearly aiming itself at a much younger audience and trying to capture a different style of perfumery to what had gone before with Moogler. This is a fizzy, carefree, fruity feeling fragrance. It has lychee, it has raspberry, and it has a very bright fluorescent pink kind of rose in it. In the base, gone is the patchouli, it's akigala wood, which gives it a peppery woodiness almost. Something also adding to the fizziness of the fragrance. But really, it's got nothing to do with the original Angel whatsoever, apart from being in the same bottle. This begged the question amongst fans of the Moogler brand, why were they calling this fragrance Angel when it really wasn't anything to do with the original Angel? This annoyed people because it made people think that L'Oreal was just feeding off the original branding and fame of the original fragrance, trying to make something just successful through being an angel, not through being its own fragrance. Personally, I'll defend Nova a little bit because I think Nova is a fragrance that is fun. I think that it gives me a smile whenever I wear it. It's something that's lighthearted. It's something that's playful. But I do agree that it's not an angel and I don't think it should have been branded as an angel. It should have been branded as a separate fragrance in a separate bottle with a separate identity to the original Angel. The change in direction with Angel Nova really alienated a lot of the original fans of the Moogler brand and really was the start of the downward spiral of the brand for the original fans. In 2021, hardcore Moogler fans had another shock on their hands and that shock was Alien Goddess. So Alien Goddess smelt like something we'd all smelt a million times before. It was a vanilla coconut fragrance. It, it was fine, it was sweet, it was pleasant, it was friendly. It just wasn't Moogler. It smelt more like something that Lancome would come out with. It smelt almost like it could be La Nuit Tres Tresor Nude or uh, Soleil Cristal by La Vie Belle. It just wasn't a Moogler fragrance. And really the reviews of this fragrance from people who own other Moogler fragrances if you watch the videos from back in the day, people are shocked. People are amazed that, that this is something from Moogler. They are disappointed. But then the new fans loved it because it's a very friendly, very easy to like fragrance. And actually, if you look at the branding of this fragrance and the blurb from the Moogler brand at the time, they said they were aiming this fragrance at a new audience. They were aiming this fragrance to the under 25s, so the people who don't remember the old angel, the old alien, the even aura even. So this fragrance just marked an abandonment of the old Moogler house style and really a complete change of direction, which has continued since really. And I guess it depends upon the time you came to the Moogler brand as to what you think about this. To some people, this might just be a perfectly pleasant fragrance. To others, this might be an, a, an insult to the alien name and something that should just never be mentioned again. I, I've definitely seen some very extreme reactions to Alien Goddess and also to its flankers. 
I think actually for me, Alien Goddess Intense is much closer to the original Alien than this one ever was. This one feels like it's nothing to do with Alien, much like Angel Nova felt like it was nothing to do with Angel. But yeah, Alien Goddess was a shock. So finally, we are back in 2023 and bang up to date with the release of Angel Elixir. So Angel Elixir really received very lukewarm reviews. I think it has one of the lowest scores I've seen for a Moogla fragrance on Fragrantica. It's just something that didn't capture the market. I did a dedicated review of this fragrance. I will leave it linked. But safe to say, I didn't particularly enjoy it. And to me, it smelt like just a lot of other things that are on the market right now. And again, that's not what Moogla stands for. Moogla is a different and individual kind of brand, or at least it was. So I'd just be interested to hear what you all think about Moogla and also about its clear change in direction since L'Oreal took over the brand. So I think that's the thing, isn't it, about Moogla? It's no longer something that you can't smell elsewhere. And the new fragrances are just not something that really attracts me anymore. And I really was obsessed with the Moogla brand when I first started my YouTube channel. And I would actually really love to see their sales figures and to see just how much fragrance is being bought from Moogla nowadays, because I bet it's nowhere near what was being bought from them under the Clarins brand. I just think they've completely changed direction and I would be really interested to know what you think of Moogla fragrances. Which one is your favourite? Which fragrance would you love to see come back? Please let me know down below and thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already subscribed, then please do consider subscribing. And also please like this video if you have enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one. Bye.